This lecture is about the recommender systems. So, so far we have uh, talked about a lot of aspects of search engines. And we have talked about the problem of search and ranking problem, different methods for ranking, and implementation of search engine, and uh, how to uh, evaluate the search engine, uh, etc. This is partly because uh, we uh, know that web search engines are by far the most important applications of text retrieval. And they are the most useful tools to help people convert big raw text data into a small set of relevant documents. Uh, another reason why we spend so many lectures on search engines is because many techniques used in search engines are actually also very useful for recommender systems, which is the topic of this lecture. And so uh, overall, the two systems are actually uh, well connected and there are many techniques that are shared by uh, them. So this is a slide that you have seen before when we talked about uh, the two different modes of text access, pull and uh, push. And we uh, mentioned that recommender systems are the main systems to serve users in the push mode where the systems would uh, take initiative to recommend the information to user or to push the relevant information to the user. And this often works well when uh, the user has a relatively stable information need when the system has a good knowledge about what the user uh, wants. So a recommender system is sometimes called a filtering system and it's because Recommending useful uh, items to people is like uh, discarding or filtering out uh, the useless articles. Um, and so in, in this sense, uh, they are kind of uh, similar. And in all the cases, the system must make a binary decision. And usually uh, there is a dynamic uh, uh, source of information items. And you have some knowledge about the user's interest and then the system would uh, make a delivery decision whether this item is interesting to the user and then uh, if it is interesting then the system would recommend the article to the user. So the basic filtering question here is really will this user like uh, this item? Will you like uh, item X? And there are two ways to answer this question if you think about it. Right? Uh, one is look at what items you like and then we can see if X is actually like those items. The other is to look at the who likes X and we can see if this user looks like uh, one of those users or like most of those users. And these strategies can be combined. If we follow the first strategy uh, to look at item similarity in the case of recommending text objects then we are talking about the content-based filtering or content-based recommendation. If we look at the second um, strategy, then it's to compare uh, users. And in this case, we are exploiting user similarity and the technique is often called collaborative filtering. So let's first look at the content-based filtering system. This is what the system uh, would look like. Inside the system, there will be a binary classifier that would uh, have some knowledge about the user's interest and it's called a user interest profile. It maintains this profile to keep track of the user's interest. And then there is a utility function to guide the user to make decisions. And I explain the utility function in a moment. It, it helps the system decide where to set the threshold. And then the accepted documents will be those that have passed the threshold according to the classifier. There should be also an initialization module that would take a, a user's input, maybe from a user's um, specified keywords or chosen category, etc. And this will be uh, to feed the system with the initial user profile. There is also typically a learning module that would learn from user's feedback over time. Now note that in this case, typically a user's information need is stable. So the system would have a lot of opportunities to observe the users. You know, if the user has taken a recommended item, has viewed that, and this is a signal uh, to indicate that uh, the recommended item may be relevant. If the user discarded it, oh, it's not relevant. 
And so such feedback can be a long-term feedback and can last for a long time. And the system can collect a lot of information about the user's interest. And this can then be used to improve the classifier. Now, what's the criteria for uh, evaluating such a system? Well, how do we know this filtering system actually uh, performs well? Now, in this case, we cannot use the ranking evaluation measures like a map because we can't afford waiting for a lot of documents and then rank the documents to make a decision for the user. And uh, so uh, the system must make a decision uh, in real time in general to decide uh, whether the item is above the threshold or not. So in other words, we're trying to decide the absolute relevance. So in this case, uh, one commonly used strategy is to use a utility function to evaluate the system. So here I show a linear utility function that's defined as, for example, three multiplied by the number of good items that you delivered minus two multiplied by the number of bad items you, del that you deliver. So in other words, we, we could kind of um, just uh, uh, treat this as almost a, a, in a gambling game. If you delete, uh, if you deliver one good item, let's say you win three dollars, you gain three dollars, three dollars. But if you deliver a bad one, and you will lose two dollars. And this utility function basically kind of measures uh, how much money you will uh, get by doing this kind of game, right? And so it's clear that if you want to maximize this utility function, your strategy should be to deliver as many good articles as possible and to minimize the delivery of bad articles. Yeah, that's obvious, right? Now, one interesting question here is uh, how should we set these coefficients? Now, I just showed a three and a negative two uh, as the possible coefficients, but one can ask the question, are they reasonable? So what do you think? Do you think that's a reasonable choice? What about the other choices? You know, so for example, we can have 10 and a minus one, or one minus 10. What's the difference? What do you think? How would this utility function affect the system's uh, threshold decision? Right? You can think of these two extreme cases, 10 minus 1 versus uh, 1 minus 10. Which one do you think would encourage the system to over-deliver? Which one would encourage the system to be conservative? Yeah. If you think about it, you will see that when we get a big award, for delivering a good document, you incur only a small penalty for delivering a bad one. Intuitively, you would be encouraged to deliver more, right? And you can try to deliver more in hope of getting a good one delivered, and then you'll get a big award. Right? So uh, on the other hand, if you choose one minus 10, you don't really get uh, such a big price if you deliver, deliver a good uh, document. On the other hand, you will have a big loss if you deliver a bad one. You can imagine that the system would be very reluctant to deliver a lot of documents. It has to be absolutely sure that it's not uh, a non-relevant one. So this utility function has to be designed based on a specific application. The three basic problems in content-based filtering are the following. First, uh, it has to make a filtering decision. So it has to be a binary decision, uh, make a, a binary classifier. Given a text, uh, text document and a profile description of the user, it has to say yes or no, whether this document should be delivered or not. So that's a decision um, module. And there should be an initialization module, as you have seen earlier. And this is to get the system started. And we have to initialize the system based on only very limited uh, text description or very few examples from the user. And the third component is a learning module, which ha has to be able to learn from limited relevance judgments, uh, because we can only learn from the user uh, about their preferences on the delivered documents. If we don't deliver a document to the user, we would never know, uh, we would never um, be able to know whether the user uh, likes it or not. Right? And we can accumulate a lot of documents and can learn from the entire history. And all these modules would have to uh, be optimized to maximize the utility. So how can we build such a system? And there are many different approaches. 
Here, uh, we're going to talk about uh, how to extend a retrieval system, a search engine for information filtering. Again, here's why uh, we've spent a lot of time to talk about the search engines, because it's actually not very hard to extend the search engine uh, for information filtering. So here's the basic idea for extending a retrieval system for information filtering. First, we can use a lot of retrieval techniques to do scoring, right? So we know how to score documents against queries, uh, etc. We can measure the similarity between a profile text description and a document. Uh, and then we can use a score threshold for the filtering decision. We, we do retrieval and then we kind of find the scores of documents and then we apply a threshold to, to say, uh, to see whether a document is passing the threshold or not. And if it's passing the threshold, we're going to say it's relevant and we're going to deliver it to the user. And another component that we have to add is, for, is of course, to learn from the history. And here we can uh, use the traditional feedback techniques to learn to improve scoring. And we know Rocky can be used for scoring uh, improvement. Right? And but we have to develop new approaches to learn how to uh, set the threshold. And uh, you know, we need to set it initially, and then we have to learn how to update the threshold over time. So here's uh, what the um, system might look like if we just uh, generalize the vector space model for uh, filtering uh, uh, problems. Right. So you can see the document vector could be fed into a scoring module, which is already exists in uh, in a search engine that implements a vector space model. And the profile uh, will be uh, treated as a query, essentially. And then the profile vector can be matched with the document vector to generate a score. And then this score will be fed into a threshold module that would say yes or no. And then the evaluation would be based on utility um, for the filtering results. If it says yes, and then the document will be sent to the user, and then the user could give some feedback and the feedback information would have been would be used to both adjust the threshold and to adjust the vector representation. So the vector learning is essentially the same as uh, query modification or feedback in the case of search. The threshold learning is a new component that we need to talk a little bit more about. Mm -hmm.